Hello. And we're live. Oh, we've got a little circle going round and round. I don't know if that means we're definitely live or we're not quite yet. Hello. <laughs> oh, we're live. There it goes. We're on now, definitely. Definitely on now. So we'll wait a wee few minutes and see if anyone is joining us. This has apparently been um, quite a popular one, according to um, the amount of people who are interested in stuff. So um, hopefully some some of you as will, will come on and join. So if you are watching, guys, just give us a little hello in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, obviously, we are in um, the Shire of Banff. <laughs> Um, so let us know where you're watching us from, um, just for pure nosiness, no for other reasons, <laughs> not for any other reason. Uh, we just we're just a bit nosy. Um, so let us know, say hi in the comments, um, and let us know you're watching. So how's everyone today? It's a bit of a drier, I know, drier couple of days since the the awful weather at the weekend. I hope nobody was washed away. So oh gosh. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Lots of hellos coming. Yeah, through now. fab. That's great, guys. Let us. So our our last um, Facebook live went um, was really quite popular, and we're um, with our likes already so far. This seems seems to be quite oh. an interesting topic. I yeah. think that um, everybody's really. So we've got Essex. In. We've got Northern Ireland. I think it was Northern Ireland. Here's my scene. Northern Ireland, yeah. Oh, wow. Fab. So, guys, <laughs> the comments aren't coming up on the computers. We've got the comments down here on our phone, just in case you see us looking down. So, um, so thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining us, everyone letting us know where you're from. That's fantastic. Um, it's fantastic for us to know that um, we're reaching so far. That's amazing. Um, we're delighted to be bringing these videos to you guys yeah. um, and still doing somewhat of our job in these... <laughs> <laughs> in these times when we don't we're not getting to do our normal things so that that's amazing um it's ace that you're all here um so hopefully today um is going to be useful to you guys so um we're going to go over um and this is what we're doing today is pretty like it's like baseline toilet training like there's not going to be um anything like amazing and fantastically new that's never even been thought before this is this is it's pretty it's pretty much the basics of toilet training but hopefully you guys will pick up some hints and tips um from what we're saying today um and also you can be asking us questions um ask us questions at the end um in the comment section as well and we will try um try and help you um yeah so i think we'll be yeah. Just get going. And this is just what we go over with our mums, really. When yeah, we yeah. have our classes and stuff like this. It's not. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not anything totally different. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I will just um, get started. So, welcome along, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And oh, we're almost falling off the table. <laughs> Um, and today we're going to go over um, some toilet training hints and tips and things for you guys. So, <clears throat> so first thing is, how do I know when my child is ready for toilet training? So this is probably a little bit small for you guys um, to see, but don't worry, I'm, I'm obviously going to read it out and stuff. And this should be available to watch um, afterwards as well. Um, so first of all, every child is different okay and you'll hear that and you'll read it everywhere um it's kind of it's a it's a rule book and um, every child is completely different so when they learn to do everything um dif at different times so they learn to walk at different times they learn to talk at different times um you know your child best um and you will know um when the best time is for them to start so please do not be listening to other kind of friends and family and oh so and so was toilet trained by the time they were one and all this kind of um stuff and if they were that's fantastic for them being toilet trained at that age um but it's about what's what's best for your child and your child is going to meet that milestone at, when it's ready for them and um, when it's time for them so um it's the first thing is that it's really important that they are ready so no matter how old they are and at what stage um, all the rest of their development is that they need to be ready to toilet train mm -hmm. but as long as that um it's also really important that you choose the right time for you as well okay so we need to be thinking about big life changes that are happening so for example 
a new baby coming in, either get them done well before the new baby is born or wait. (laughs) (laughs) Do not be trying to tackle, you know, kind of a new baby coming in the next couple of weeks and let's try toilet training. Um, House moves, um, starting nursery or these kind of things, like big life changes. Um, They might not seem that big to you guys, but they're going to be pretty big to the little ones. Um, So, so yeah, so choosing the right time for you guys as well as um, the right time for our children as well. Um, and absolutely, there is no set age that you should start toilet training, okay? That's not what we are here to tell you. We're not going to say, right, okay, two and a half, now. <laughs> it's not like that. But most children between 18 months and three years, somewhere in here is when they're going to be ready to toilet train. And it's really important that as parents, um, you guys are aware of this and you're looking out for the signs which um, we're going to go over um, because what can happen is we can miss it and if we miss that miss that time when they're ready they, they can become more resistant to it and it's just so much harder when they're like four and we're trying to toilet train them and they're totally set in their ways <laughs> and they're, they're getting even more stubborn and um, so it's really important that we do but that we don't miss it as well. Um, and also making sure that when you are toilet training, um, that everyone who is involved in your child's care is doing the same thing. So if they're going to grandma's house, if they go to childminders, if they go to nursery, um, making sure that everyone knows it's happening and everyone is doing the same thing. Whatever you choose to do with your child, whether they're choosing to sit on the potty, whether they're choosing the toilet. Or if they've got words. If they've got specific, yeah, if they've got specific words that mean pee or poo or um, whatever. I once worked with a child who just said and that meant you needed a pee so we had to get our heads around, <laughs> heads around that in the nursery it was like all right okay so yeah we're not just being a snake we need to be um so yeah so it's really important that everyone involved in your child's care is on board and being consistent with the training that you're doing <clears throat> um so we need to look out for some signs of readiness okay so um, there's a massive list here, guys. Okay, so we're not saying you need to sit and tick off every single one. Okay, um, but you do need to look out for a few of these. And once you start seeing some of these signs, then you can begin to think about um, toilet training, when I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do it. So um, you're looking for your child to have regular, soft, formed poos, relatively predictable times of the day. So um, generally, you're going to know that roughly they normally have a poo maybe every day between two and three, or you're going to know it's maybe every second day, whatever's normal for your child. Um, you, you will, they will, they'll get into that kind of routine or it's maybe kind of 10 o'clock in the morning and um, they'll have their little routine that they um, that they get into. And also they're very, at this point, they would be very unlikely to poo during the night. Um, so that would just kind of mean that their bowel and their um, bladder and things are developing control um, and kind of being full and then emptying. Um, also, along that kind of same lines is your child having dry periods throughout the day of at least two hours. So um, being able to kind of have a nappy on for a good maybe four hours, mm-hmm. five hours, um, you know, without it needing changed. Um, would indicate if they have these periods of dryness again it's that indication that the bladder is learning to fill up before it empties rather than kind of constantly um, emptying (laughs) emptying itself like it does with babies Um, and as as well as this they're probably going to be dry after most daytime naps as well Um, so you want them to be coordinated enough to be able to walk so they can walk to the (laughs) to the potty or to the toilet um, urinating a fair amount at a time and this just goes back to the same like if they're having a dry period of at least two hours then they're going to be urinating a fair amount at a time um, can follow simple instructions for example go and get your shoes go to the toilet yeah <laughs> um, you want them to have words for urine and stool so that's completely up to you guys what you're going to use in your family and um, pee or poo or wee or whatever and um, also the words that you're going to use for their um, genital areas as well you need to decide decide that so everyone's using the same same vocabulary for the child so it's not too confusing for them and um, They might be able to sit down quietly in one position for two to five minutes. So that could be obviously playing with toys or whatever, but if they're able to kind of stay sitting um, and occupied for two to five minutes um, in the air. Um, Be able to pull their pants or their trousers up and down. So just learning that independence skills. 
Um, they might show start to show a dislike to wearing a wet or dirty nappy. So they come and get you um, once they've got a wet nappy or a dirty nappy. You know, they kind of they kind of get this off me. <laughs> Um, showing an interest in other people's bathroom habits. Um, I don't know about you guys, my son's <laughs> almost four and I still can't get to the toilet by myself. He's still in with me every single time. Um, they, do, they do tend to come with us. <laughs> um, um, never, given, poo oh, sorry. So never poo in peace again, do you? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> Um, give a physical or verbal sign that they're having a bowel movement. So um, this is kind of when you're able to kind of look at your child and you're like, they're having a poo. <laughs> so they might have kind of like a facial, facial expression that they do. They might go and hide behind the sofa or go in a corner yeah. um, or they just kind of squat for a couple of minutes and then they carry on their day. Um, those kind of things. These are signs that they are aware that something is, is going on, if that makes sense. Um, demonstrating a desire for independence. Um, taking pride in accomplishment. So this is really going to help um, when we speak about um, kind of rewarding them. Um, if they absolutely love getting rewards, even if it's just verbal rewards, um, then that's really good because that means that they're going to kind of hook into whatever rewards you are and it's, it's going to really help. Um, you want them to be not resistant to learn to use the toilet. So some children will go through phases of just point blank screaming the house down whenever you mention the potty or the toilet or whatever. So if you're in that space, then now's not the time <laughs> to try to be toilet train them. Um, and the same as generally you want them to be in a kind of cooperative stage. Now, um, when we're speaking about children, we're probably thinking about them being in their in their two, um, in their twos. And obviously we'll have our terrible twos mm -hmm. and that's lots of tantrums and that's being very uncooperative um, for a lot of children. Mm -hmm. um, but they're gonna go through phases of being more cooperative and, and less cooperative. So we want it to be in a time when they are being a bit more cooperative. They're doing what we're asking them um, a lot of the time um, and not being negative or contrary to what we're saying. So massive list there, <laughs> but once you kind of start to tick off a few of these signs, um, then you can start to think about starting toilet training mm -hmm. um, and, and getting organised for, for doing it there. So helping your child to become ready. So this is when this is like you've done all your kind of, you know what, um, what the, they're, they're kind of, as Lindsay said, ticked off the list a little bit. Um, so you start at the very beginning, you're starting talking to your child about going to the toilet. Um, you're speaking about um, when you're changing their nappy or when you're going to the toilet and you're talking um, all the time, seems all the time, it's talking about <laughs> poo and wee and stuff like that. I know. So you're talking all the time, using the words that you are wanting the children to use um, about it. Um, and you're encouraging the children to undress themselves um, and stuff like that. But when you are ex getting them to start doing self-independence and getting to them to dress themselves, don't expect them to be able to take like little zips or buttons or <laughs> pinafores or dungarees if this is the time that they're um, going to be doing their potty training. Joggers, something that's easy to take down and up yeah. because children do wait till the very last <laughs> second to say that they need a pee. So make sure it's not it's not going to be an accident waiting ha to happen because yeah. they can't get their clothes off. Yeah, they don't have that control that we have. No. Um, or did have before we had children. Yeah. So <laughs> avoid um, um, clothes that's got all that. Try and get clothes, yeah. and we're kept coming into the kind of colder months, of, um, try and find clothes that's easy to wash and dry. There's no point getting something that's really kind of, it's going to take ages to um, wash and dry. So can I, because accidents will, will happen. Yeah. There's no doubt. Right, right, right. Um, and you're replacing like the the potty in the living room area to allow the children to access the potty and look at the potty and, and this is before you're kind of starting you're you, you're kind of introducing the potty so they know this is what it's a potty and you're kind of they're getting becoming yeah. it's familiar not, it's with not new it. and it's, it's not scary because yeah. if, if you just introduce them to a potty and say right sit down and have a pee or a poo in there they're going to be like what on earth are you on about right, so getting them familiar with the potty um, or toilet seat or whatever it is that you're using with your child um, just helps it helps it go a bit smoother when yeah. you start to toilet. Even train. getting them to pick it sometimes. Yeah, well. absolutely. Yeah, go to um, the shop. So 
um, allow your child to be in the bathroom with you. So <laughs> um, this is when like your your independence of yourself, it sometimes has to go out the window. Um, um, their children are really interested so they're going to want to see um, you go to the toilet and dad go to the <laughs> toilet and brothers or sisters go to the toilet um, you kind of this is the time that you kind of don't want to kind of be no this is my space go out you really want this to be quite a natural thing that yeah. normalizes it yeah um, which is important and I know um, you might be like you know we speak about parents and it's like oh god never in your life did you ever think you'd be excited about about a poo um these kind of things but it's it's about normalizing it for your children and it's okay to speak about these things because it's important that they do feel that they speak about us and it, then it's after that they can start to learn about privacy and 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 being private Definitely. and things like that but it's it's keeping it open and normalizing it all for them so that again it's not scary um, and it's not weird for them when we do come to toilet train. Mm -hmm. um, and when like we um can I say that everybody should sit down for a start. And now this is even boys. Boys yeah. um, to their bladder better, so everybody should be sitting down. So sorry, dads and brothers, <laughs> if you have to go and sit down in the toilet and have a pee for a little while, just go for it. Yeah. Um Everybody actually empties their bladders a little bit better if they're actually sitting down. So um, let dads um, tell them to sit in the toilet and to let them know it's normal for daddies to sit on the toilet. And then once they've established toilet training, then you can um, get them to stand up if that's yeah. your, your wishing. But um, at the moment, get them to sit down. And um, so at least then if toddlers come in, maybe if their to twos are coming in, whatever. Yeah. Um, so... Um, Oh, I've lost where I'm going now. So, so once you've uh, you've kind of got all that, um, then you start kind of to thinking about bathroom habits being in the bathroom. So it comes to maybe changing if you've got the room, um, changing nappies in the bathroom, um, putting the poos down the toilet um, in the bathroom. So they know that poos stay in the toilet, yes, and you're yeah. getting them to flush the toilet, the the poo away. Because poos stay in the toilet, they don't stay in nappies. They when they're big, their the poos go away, and they need to know that this is very, very, very normal for a poo to be in the toilet and to be flushed away. So making sure that um you're kind of you've got that, and then you're encouraging them to flush the toilet and then wash their hands and kind of do all the bathroom mm -hmm. things that we're supposed to do, the bathroom habits that getting into the routine, yeah. yeah. So um, you might just be changing their nappies in the bathroom, but that's what you're starting with. Um, or if you know that they're going to, at a certain time of day, or um, that they're having a poo, try and encourage them to have their poo, even in the nappy, in the bathroom. So it's bathroom is where you, the, the toilet happens. Um, nowadays, well, no, nowadays, but disposable nappies do exactly what they're meant to do. They are so absorbent. So as soon as um your child has just done a pee it's just soaked up and they don't feel dry it wet at all so they're constantly dry so they don't have that feeling of being wet so some children don't always know when they've just done a pee um so what we, we would suggest is um in their nappies prior to kind of thinking that, that you're going to start and whatever putting a bit of tissue paper or a bit of kitchen roll or a, bit of a, square, a little square of toilet roll into their nappy because that then stops as soon as the, the pee hits it, it stays wet. So then the child knows, oh, I did this, this happens and whatever. So now they, they start into the links there that they do a pee, they feel wet. So that's quite a good way to start that um journey to by letting them know that there's um it is linked together yeah um then um so yes yeah, so it'll stay wet um allow your child to have access to the, their own pants um this is when the, their independence can come in so when you go to the shops get them to pet buy their favorite pants peppa pig <laughs> or dinosaurs or whatever yeah. because sometimes like you'll find that if they've got their own pants it's like oh I don't want to wet Pe Peppa Pig or get Peppa Pig dirty or whatever so getting them to pick their own pants getting them to get their own potties things like that that gives starts the excitement of the in independence of starting as you mean to go on so getting them to uh, get their own pants um, and making sure that they are accessible um, for them to use um, and start reading stories about poos and peas and 
Um, there's so much books out there. So much books. Yeah. See, is we could have. There's just there is yeah. full of different kind of. Um, there's like Pirate Pete and Princess Polly, use the potty. So that's like a couple of different books. They've got like a button that yeah. you press and it makes a flushing noise. There's a really good one that's called um, even even firefighters go to the toilet and on every page is like somebody different. So it's like the firefighter, the policeman, um, you know, like the astronaut, like all these kind. Of, and it's it's all about normalizing it and kind of being like, oh, do you do you want to be the same as the fireman? You know, he does his pees and poos in the toilet. Um, yeah. So it's all about doing that and mm -hmm. books are just a fantastic way of getting that conversation there because it's there's the the spoken word obviously from what we're saying but there's also you know like really nice pictures there and like the you know kind of ones that have buttons for flushing the toilet and things that, that are interactive um which just captures children's attention so much more definitely so yeah, that is all the things to kind of. So you've got the stage the that they're. Library, yeah, the library oh. is great as well. Just <laughs> ask the library to get you. Um, you know, obviously we can't go to the library right now. <laughs> um, but they can. I, I'm, as far as I'm aware, you can still borrow books from the library, but you just have to tell them the books that you want. I think. Um, so yeah, so rather than you know, we're not saying go on Amazon and spend. <laughs> 30 40 quid and a couple of books um about toilet training you can you know you can get some nice story books um and i think sometimes this is when friends come in handy if they've yeah. got their kids and they've yeah. had books or um facebook free sites whatever oh yeah yeah there's so Find much different yeah, yeah loads and loads of different sites out there so you don't have to go and buy and there's um ones online as well that you yeah. can look through yeah absolutely so um, this is just a little bit big be prepared so this is your um your pants um making sure that you've got plenty of changes of clothes like so vests and things like that getting them to change their changing yeah so once we're toilet training we don't want the poppers <laughs> so changing to the the vests that can i just have the top and not not the yeah. not the ones with the poppers they're no use for toilet training <laughs> yeah lots and lots of different clothes um yeah. and once you are potty training you are potty training so it's good by disposable nappies, Absolutely. by um, pull-ups, pull anything like that. Because <laughs> as soon as you get put on a pair, right, you're potty training today, so we're in pants, but tomorrow we're going to be in pull-ups. And then the next day we're in pants. It's just too much for them. They need to know that as soon as they're in pants, they're in pants. Okay, you have your, your pull-ups or your nappies at bedtime, but um, once they're in pants during the day, you stick to pants during the day so get rid yeah. of your 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 pants your nappies and stuff like that and making sure that you've got a stool or something um for them to um sit on when they're um more so when they're in the, the toilet in the toilet yeah so when you're in the toilet um you probably know that your your hips are supposed to no your knees are supposed to be higher than your hips um for the angle of to allow you to your sit body's like aligned yeah to empty your bowels yeah. and your um and your bladder when our knees are higher than, slightly slightly yeah. higher than our hips yeah mm -hmm. so so if you get a stool for them then then that encourages that for when they, they are if you are sitting in the the pot toilet um with that like a seat like like a little seat on it or um whatever but that get that ready for when you are using the, the toilet so yeah. yeah absolutely okay so are we ready? <laughs> let's go. Let's, train. let's go. Let's do it. Um, so as Kendra said, goodbye nappies for during the day. When you decide to toilet train, we need to just go for the pants. We need to just go for it. Um, as Kendra said before, nappies um, are really absorbent. Pull-ups are just a nappy that you pull up and on, okay? Um, so they're really, really absorbent. So the children are not going to learn that when they pee, um, you know, when they have an accident, it goes into the nappy. And I know saves mess but it's not helping the children learn about that because actually um like we said before accidents will happen and accidents need to happen accidents are part of the learning process for them they need to learn about that feeling in their tummy and what that means and if they don't make it to the toilet what that means it means that they get wet it means that they become uncomfortable um so it is really important that when we start toilet training we nappies are away for daytime obviously na night time is completely different and we'll speak about that after um so that's fine nappies at, at night time is fine but during the day we need to just pants we we'll just go for it okay um build up a routine so um at the very start you know when you start toilet training asking them if they need a poo and a pee um 
it's not really going to help because they haven't established that yet. They haven't learned that yet. They need to learn that that feeling in their tummy means that they need to go. Um, so at the very start, we need to say it's it's time to go for the potty. Let's try for the potty every couple hours. Um, is good and um, a good kind of rule of thumb is maybe about roughly about 15 minutes after a big drink or a meal um, is a great time to try and, and go up and go and have a pee. Somebody once said that um, Alexa is the best thing ever. <laughs> you ask Alexa to do a reminder every whatever two hours and say potty time or whatever they'll listen to Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, listen to Alexa <laughs> more so than mum. Yeah mum and dad absolutely. Um, you might also want to keep a bag of like books and toys and things um, that are just for them to use and play with whilst they're sitting on the potty. So again, it's about this encouraging them to sit on the potty, making it a good experience, a positive experience for them. Um, so toys, um, books, bubbles or a windmill um, are really, really good. And actually, I, I think we kind of speak about this after, but bubbles, um, blowing bubbles or blowing a windmill actually us doing that blow in motion actually relaxes um, all the muscles down below and makes it easier to let go um, and, and have a pee or a poo. So um, they can be really good. Um, but for no more than two or three minutes, we're just speaking about a couple of minutes um, to start with. And it's just getting them used to sitting on the potty yeah. um, and things like that. Um, also, it's important that you explain to your child what is going to happen when you do start toilet training. They need to know what's expected of them. Um, and also making sure that we are wording this really positively um, and, you know, kind of um, making sure that we're kind of, oh, we're going to start toilet training and you're going to be really clever. Um, you can say big girl, big boy. Um, that's absolutely fine. However, you might find that some some children can have like kind of an, an adverse um emotion to that and they say oh no I don't want to be big I want to see a baby and and things like that so using other words like them being clever them being amazing they're being fantastic all these kind of words might be better for you to use it just depends on the child some children are like yes yes I'm a big boy um, and then the next one's a bit like oh no I, 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 I want to be a baby I'll just see a baby yeah so totally depends on your child um you can um once you kind of start to get into the toilet training, gently inquire if your child thinks that they might want to need need or they might want to try using the potty. Um, and also this is really helpful if you can um, familiarise yourself with your child's routine. And you will, you will know, generally you kind of know that you can maybe change their nappy around 10 o'clock in the morning because they've normally had a pee. So you'll know between half past, from half past nine, you maybe not need to start nagging them because generally they have a pee between half past nine and 10. Um, that kind of things or you'll start to recognize the signs um for them going as well um so positive reinforcement so this is really important we really need to um congratulate our children and reward them for this this is this is like a brand new and i know it's it's normal and they'll have to do it but this is really new for them and we need to celebrate their successes um, so, and at the very start, what you want to celebrate is just them sitting on the potty, um, which I know might sound ridiculous, mm -hmm. but just them being happy to sit on the potty or the toilet if you're whatever you're using. Um, let's let's reward that. Let's give them that. So rewards should be small and instant. So it might be a sticker. Um, it might be a stamp. That's what I use with my little boy, and I find that really good because stickers um, with him anyway. He would oh yeah, that's a sticker, and he would take it off, and then it would be lost. So stamps on the hand. Um, are really good to get stamper pens for like a pound for six or something. <laughs> um, stampers, yeah, so stamps, stickers, a small and instant reward. Um, telling them that we're, we'll go to the shop and we'll get them a toy or something like that is not, that doesn't help because they don't remember. By the time you get to the shop and they've decided what they want, they're not actually remembering what they're getting that for. So it needs to be um, instant and it needs to be small because you need to be able to do this a lot. <laughs> You're going to be rewarding them for, for a wee while um, until you get up and going with your um, your toilet training. Um, so yeah, so starting by rewarding them just for sitting on the potty um, or the toilet and then once they're regularly doing that then we can move the goalposts um, and we start rewarding them for um, when they do um, a pee um, or when they do a pee and then again we move it to then rewarding them for staying dry. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just about moving the goalposts, starting small, make your goals small. And then once they're achieving that, because they need to see that they're getting rewards 
for for doing something good before they recognize that that's what they're going to get um deal with accidents so like i said accidents are going to happen okay so just deal with them calm and matter of factly i know it can be really difficult especially when you've said to a child do you need a pee no and then like two seconds later they have an accident and you're like i just told you um and i know it can be really frustrating um but it's important that we're we're not giving them a row for for having an accident because this is all just a learning process for them um so just deal with them okay you've had an accident let's get you cleaned up let's get you some dry clothes on and next time you'll go to the you know you'll go to the potty or you know after they've had an accident get them on the potty and see just make sure anything finished <laughs> make sure they're finished and get them back on um <clears throat> and then with your child you can empty the potty into the toilet um and flush um and obviously that's very exciting that they get to flush um for them as well so one thing that's really really important is to be consistent mm -hmm. when you start toilet training don't give it a couple of days and give up Outside. yeah it's it's not going to work in two days <laughs> i mean i'm sure there's books that say toilet train in three days or whatever they say let's yeah two weeks okay that's what we say a good at least two weeks before you can say okay we're not ready we're going to stop and we'll wait a month a couple of months and then we'll try again so give it a good couple of weeks um before you're stopping so um as Kendra said, um, easier for boys to sit, um, to sit down, um, to start with. Um, and this is just because we, they empty their bladder better when they're sitting down. Um, and also, if they just, if they start by standing up, they can forget about pooing, if that makes sense. Um, so sitting down um, and they can have their pee and poo. And then once we've established a toilet training and they know what that feeling in their tummy means it means they need a pee it means it means they need a poo then we can then they can start to try and um, to stand up um if they want to <laughs> um and then at the beginning of toilet training um so this first couple of weeks that you start toilet training you might want to stay at home and um, it just makes it easier and less stressful um for you to just kind of maybe like stay at home not venture too far just visit friends' houses, which we can't do just now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, not venturing too far. Don't go away and wait raking into Aberdeen um, when you're trying to toilet train. It's just not fair. Um, but once you do feel like you want to start venturing out, it's just about making yourself aware of where, where the toilets are. You know, kind of once we get there, there's toilets here, there's toilets there. It's really useful if you want to keep a potty in, in just in the in the boot. Um, and that way, you know, they can, especially for girls, boys, want, you know, they can stand up and pee outside. It's not quite so easy for girls to pee outside. So just sitting, you know, at the side of the road on the potty is absolutely fine. Yeah. No one is going to judge you for doing that. I've seen people in the air, um, going past in the road and the, the potty's in the boot and the child's in the boot. Yeah. And like... <laughs> that's normal that's okay yeah absolutely absolutely because again it's about that you want them to to succeed you don't want to put them in situations that's going to pretty much um mm -hmm. yeah that they're definitely going to fail you want to put them in situations you want to give them everything you can to make sure that they succeed at this um and you know they're going to get that that sense of achievement as well from it and that's really really good so for your top tips for um what you're doing. <clears throat> So we're saying 20 to 30 minutes after a big drink or food is a good try time to go to the toilet. So this is like after breakfast is actually a really good and leaving it like half an hour after breakfast or half an hour after a lunch or after half an hour after your dinner at night. It's a really good time to go and let them sit down in the toilet in the potty because that is just the time that their bowels have started to kind of think, you know, yeah, it's all starting to move about now. It's time to kind of go um, and try the toilet. Um try to stick with the light colored drinks mm -hmm. so this means that like um there's so much drinks out there that's actually quite um, it irritates the bowel so this is like um your black currant or um dark colored juices are ones to really avoid yeah and fizzy drinks as well and caffeine just, anything yeah, like that irritates the yeah. blood. Uh, bladder blood. It, water <laughs> is the best yes. to be fair can i <laughs> um if your child's used to juice that's fine but can i it really is it's black currant and dark colored juices are the ones that you really do uh, try and avoid because it, it irritates the bowels and then the, the um it kind of gets mixed singles and whatever. It could, yeah it can make the bladder kind of leak it make it like ur more urgent when it, when they need a pee um or it kind of makes them need a pee even though it's not full um yeah so it can make them pee more 
um, because it just irritates the bladder. So the bladder just wants wants to be emptied. Um, so yeah, so it's best to stick to light coloured drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, once boys do start to stand up, um, you do not want um, water fountains and uh, <laughs> fire hoses, fire hoses <laughs> everywhere all over the bathroom floor. Um, so um, one of the, the some of the good things that tips are is like putting a ping pong ball into the toilet. Let them use it as like target practice. So they pee into the, the toilet and they're trying to aim the, the ball. You flush the toilet. The ping pong ball stays because it's um it'll float on top, floats, float yeah. on top, um, or you could actually put like food coloring in the toilet. So if you put in blue food blue food coloring into the toilet and they pee, it turns green. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's <laughs> magic. Lots, it's magic yes, pee. <laughs> it, so can I? You can do lots of different things um, for boys when you do want them to start um, learning to um, to stand up um, on the toilet. The toilet. Um, as Lindsay said earlier on, making sure that like if um, for if you wanting them to kind of start relaxing it and going to the toilet when they're wanting a poo, using um, bubbles and um, windmills and things like that is really a quite a good one just to kind of get them to start stop thinking. Oh, I don't want to poo, uh, and then holding it in, getting them and it kind of gets them to to relax a little bit and kind of then the body kind of works it's magic um sometimes wet and toilet dirty toilet accidents can happen um because the child is constipated now a lot of people um sometimes find that um oh they've started having accidents again it's i don't know what's happening they were potty trained for ages and what we ask them to do is the sweet corn test so the sweet corn test is that they have sweet corn for their 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 lunch or their tea or whatever and after 24 to 36 hours if that sweet corn has not passed your child's constipated so that means that'll be why that they're not pooing and they're not going to the toilet with constipation it's really quite tricky because sometimes your child could still be constipated but the Still pooping. But still pooping. <laughs> so there's a blockage somewhere, but so it's only little bits of poos coming out. So you might think, oh, but they're pooping every day. They're not constipated. Try the sweet corn test. If they they um do the sweet corn test, that's fine. They maybe just not quite ready for poos yet in the potty. But if um if they don't have the sweet corn test, definitely the, the sweet corn passed by definitely by 36 hours. Um that then you're thinking constipation. So that's I always think that's a really good one. Um, when it comes to night time, um, you can start thinking um, kind of once they're kind of established di- being dry during the day, you've got it kind of in the bag, and um, oh. they are um, you're kind of getting them prepared. Now you'll often find that children will be dry. You're checking for their nappies being dry the next in, in the morning. Um, and that's a good sign. Um, when my daughter once, I just I forgot to put her nappy on at night time. She'd been going about wearing a nappy, and then it was just oh, and then oh, she's done it. <laughs> uh, so we totally did it by accident. But um, so just making sure that in the mornings that their their nappies are dry and stuff like that. And as soon as they are getting up, you're taking them their nappies off straight yeah. away. You don't let them walk about and have this. As soon as they come out of their bed, their their um their beds, nappies off, go straight to the toilet. So they um, they get into that habit of emptying their bowels, their, their bladder straight away when they get up in the morning and um, um, that. Um, so also about um, some people think that, um, that they have to stop drink, stop drinks um, when they're potty training, but they're, um, they, they do need to have quite a lot of um, fluid in yeah, them. Yeah, regular drinks, yeah. But before bedtime, you're thinking about an hour before bed um that for last drink. yeah for their last drink yeah. and making sure that they're sitting um on the potty before they go to their bed so you could be having like when they're brushing their teeth getting their jammies on doing all that they're going and having a pee in the potty then we're um doing other things and then just before you go to bed we're going to have another quick pee in the potty um so kind of it kind of um gets them used to going to the toilet before they go um, protecting your bed with a waterproof sheet and making like the toilet accessible for them so there's no point having stair gates mm-hmm. um on their bedroom doors or on the stairs if the toilet's down the stairs and things like that so you have to be quite mindful of if they can get to the toilet if need be so um 
if if you need to have stair gates you're putting the pot in their bedroom or whatever you need to do yeah. you're being mindful of like there's no point saying that you have to get up for a pee if they can't get manage to get to the toilet um, so making sure that um you have that making sure that you have change a clean bedding in the middle of the night there's no point it's like two three o'clock in the morning or whatever time that your little ones came through and says like they're wet or whatever and you don't have dry bedding or you don't have other bedding so you be prepared that you've got other um bedding and other um, pajamas ready for them just to go straight back into their their beds again um when it comes to um the last pee at night so you're trying to say like um, what one of the things is um, count to ten and try again. So that's a good one for um, for them to stand up, count to ten, and then they get to sit down um, and try again. That's a quite kind of that's one for them to kind of remember. And sometimes just standing up and sitting down is often that your your bladder's kind of gotten a little bit of a jiggle and ready to go. Um, uh, 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 and this also helps if they're kind of dribbles in their pants and stuff like that during the day um, after they've been to the toilet. Yeah. So. Um, we spoke earlier on about having poos and um, pee, toilet train, toilet kind of books and stuff. This is a really good app. It's called Poo Goes to Poo Land. Um, and on the app, you can download on your phone. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's all about a poo going to poo land. Um, Lindsay, nope, you've used it. Yeah, the only way to get to poo land is by being flushed down the toilet and he you know he's got poo mum and dad and poo land that are missing him and it speaks about all this kind of stuff you know kind of gives gives a little character and stuff and it's like kids love it it's it's disgusting like you press on him and he farts <laughs> you know like and it, you know you get to flush the toilet and it makes a noise and stuff like that so but kids love it because it's interactive um, and obviously it's a hilarious when he farts and um and that kind of things but it's a really good way of um explaining to them especially if you have um children who do poo refusal which um is is really common um a, a lot of the time we can nail the peas but the poos just take a little bit longer to come um so it's really useful it's just letting them know that you know that's why poo has to go in the toilets because it has to go to poo land and it gets flushed and it it's yeah <laughs> we make up these stories you know it's like the dummy fairy and, <laughs> and all those kind of little uh, little things that we use the, there's another good um, um, website called Eric that um, yeah. um, with our, our working with the health visitors and stuff like that, they would we would kind of talk a lot about the Eric yeah, website. They are full of um, amazing resources and information and um, games even, and there's lots of different things. Um, so Eric website is a really good um, yeah. resource as well to if you're thinking or have got troubles or if you've got any other kind of and problems and things like that yeah it's fantastic so if you have any questions guys please put them in the comments and um, i've managed to lose some of the previous ones on <laughs> kendra's phone um, but i've got a couple here so somebody did ask if this video will be available to watch back absolutely once we are finished the live and um, it should <laughs> it should so um, it should so reload so. And, and be able to to watch it at any point um on the page and we'll share it to the to the, the normal page not just in the in the event mm -hmm. thing so um yeah so that's fantastic um somebody has um a two year two and a half year old a little boy who's non-verbal any tips on how i can go about introducing this <clears throat> um, ma see, see, there is um, some amazing Makaton um, symbols um, for going to the toilet. So I think Makaton for toilet is you're taking your two fingers and going like that. So like you're fl like th that would be classed as flushing the toilet. Um, I might be wrong there. Kind of, <laughs> it, 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 kind of. So he he might not be be able to tell you, but if you make a sign that he then knows that. Um, this is the sign that I'm going to, I need the toilet, or you could be saying you need the toilet. So um, Makaton is um, quite a good yeah. resource for um, yeah. nonverbal. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and also um, using kind of like picture cards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to show him the routine of going to the toilet. So um, kind of like taking down your pants and trousers, sitting on the toilet, mm -hmm. doing a wee a poo, wiping your bum, like having little pictures for all of these, um, for the routine of it um, can help just kind of trigger that um, knowledge for him. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and that, that actually can be really useful for even, even children who um, who are quite verbal and, and who have 
good communication skills. Um, sometimes just having a picture chart, um, it's just like a different stimulus for them. Um, and it's a bit like, you know, kind of, they can switch off to us. <laughs> talking at them and um, you know they can switch off and they cannot listen but if we if we present them with a card in front of them they're kind of like, oh yeah okay um or yeah or just having a card that means try it you know kind of going on the toilet or going on the potty um and yeah and like using alexa or having you know kind of using that alarm using that routine mm -hmm. um yeah can can be really good but the, like um, the, 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 um, i think it's the picture ones is a really good idea even just to have because like if your child goes to a playgroup or a nursery or a day nursery, a lot of them already have the pictures up yeah. next to the toilet, which tells them to remind them to flush the toilet and put the toilet roll out and, and wash, wash their, hands, their hands, all yeah. that kind of things. And it's really handy to kind of get them into that routine. Yeah, perfect. Um, Five-year primary school. <laughs> um would like um some more information so if you just um if you could message the Bampshire health visitors page you can message us on that page um and one of us will get back to you um about the information you're looking for um later on this afternoon if that's okay um my two-year-old has a cup of milk before bed would this have to stop um well i would say it, it really depends on the child because yeah. some children are, to are totally fine my son um, is he's almost four I'm gonna I keep re relating to him and mm -hmm. um, my son's almost four um and he generally he he still has a he still has juice up until maybe about 15 minutes before bed and he then brushes teeth and, and has a pee before he goes to bed and 90% of the time he's dry and um, so we, we don't have nappies with um he's he's been pretty good for um night time to be fair um so yeah it just depends on the child but it's um maybe at the start you might want to just move that cup of milk um, a little bit earlier it also depends as well if your child still uses like a bottle of milk to to get themselves to sleep that's going to be really difficult for you to um to work on so that might be something to work on first before yeah. <laughs> before trying to do toilet training um and we, we never mentioned earlier on about how much do you, um, what they need to drink during the day we, they really do need to have their bladders full there they need to know that their when their bladders full um is when they, then they need to empty it. So can I sometimes making sure that they are drinking plenty, of, wa plenty of water <laughs> during the day um, to to know that it's uh, it's time to empty them. I'm trying to see more of a comment and it's not coming up. So Chloe, you're saying that your daughter um, is interested in the potty and she's sitting on the potty with a pull up on um, and doing peas and poos whilst sitting on the potty. There we go. Thank you, Kendra. <laughs> It's not my phone, I'm not used to it. Um, but she's only 20 months. Is it too young to make the jump um to pants? Will she likely regress? Um it's really, really difficult. As we said, every child is totally different. Um 20 months is probably a bit early for her to start to understand the rewards, um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would definitely, I mean, if if she wants to allow it absolutely um you know there are children out there we've mm -hmm. said from 18 months um it's yeah it really depends on your child but if she's up for it i would say go for it um and if she has a wee regress i mean there's a lot of children have a wee um have a wee regress and even um it, like there's there's little things that'll happen in their lives that might make them just start peeing themselves all of a sudden and you know because they've started nursery or because there's a new baby in the yeah. house or um lockdown a lockdown we've had a lot of um phone calls mm -hmm. and stuff about people struggling with toilet and um with lockdown just because obviously with lockdown there was a lot of you know there's a lot of anxiety um especially at the start maybe not so much now everybody's relaxed a little bit now um but there was a lot of anxiety at the start about coronavirus and things and things like this rub off in the children mm -hmm. um and that can present with, with with peeing themselves and things like that but totally um i would say if if she's up for it just yeah let her give it a go and mm -hmm. see what happens see see what she thinks she might she might then totally yeah. <laughs> hate it but yeah give it a go um can you miss the potty and go straight to the toilet yes absolutely yeah there's absolutely as long as you've got like the stool make so the stool isn't necessarily for them to climb onto the toilet which a lot of people think it is it is about getting that positioning whilst yeah. on the toilet and getting out a good toilet seat to sit onto the toilet because sometimes if you go straight to the toilet and the not got a potty it's just like whoa this big hole and they feel they're scared to fall down it so making sure that they've got what well, there's so much amazing ones out there the ones with handles yeah. and they're oh yes yeah, loads of, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much different ones absolutely 
Um, my two-year-old currently only poos in her nappy when she's standing up. Um, how will I get her to sit down when we come to potty training? <laughs> As she seems to have gotten into the habit and prefers to stand. Um, so you would be using your rewarding. So it, it would be rewarding her for sitting for sitting down. Um, you'd maybe start with um, like this previous one said that her her daughter does pees and poos whilst in on her nappy while sitting on the on the potty. So that might be where you want to start. Keep keeping the keeping the nappy on but sit there whilst you're doing it, rewarding for that kind of things. And then it's just moving the goalposts um, and building it up. It's, yeah, it's all about what's and best for your child. One of, the, one of the other <laughs> tips is like, if they are kind of, if they are refusing to go and poo in the toilet, it's like you're you're getting them to sit on the potty, that's out of the board. Then you're getting them to, um, you're maybe um, cutting a hole in the nappy and letting them sit. So they think they've got the nappy on, but there's a hole, so the poo's going in. And then it can I just yeah yeah or then or you can have like open a nappy and lay it inside um you know kind of open in the in the potty so when they sit down they're sitting on a nappy um but it's on the potty if that makes sense so that that can be a step um mm -hmm. that goes in between um as well um yeah so is there any more questions guys um. My boy also doesn't sleep through the night. Maybe we need to work on that first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to make priorities. Uh, priorities. I mean, I don't know how old um, Leanne. Did you say how old your child is? Two year, two years old. Um, yeah. I mean, it, some children do. Two years old still get up through the night. It just, yeah. It just, it just kind of depends. Um, if he's up, yeah. I don't know. It's totally up to you. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to we're, prioritize we're coming up into the holidays the um, whole to work on yes the holidays yes. are in a couple of like a couple of days well especially for us on up in the northeast of scotland and uh, they are on friday they the children are on holiday this is the probably the best time to start and um, they are gonna kind of you've got a full fortnight there's not much we really can do just yeah. now in the holidays we'll anyway see, we'll see what nicola announces later yeah on. so you know, this is maybe the best time to think we can do this and see yes it's not long out of the the whole if you think how old like your whole length of your life two weeks can i um cho toilet tracer we're and we're saying two weeks they might crack it within a couple of days yeah but we just said don't give up within yeah. two weeks so mm -hmm. keep trying can i give it at least two weeks yeah absolutely um uh, how do you how to deal with constipation and toilet training um, so Mary absolutely get the constipation um, mm -hmm. sorted first. Yeah. Um, constipation can lead to poo refusal um, even after they're constipated because they associate pain um, with, with trying to poo and things like that. So yeah, get um, get the constipation sorted. So get to your doctor, um, probably get like Movacol or something. Um, and that kind of gives like puts that. fluid back into yeah, the poo. So Mo Movacol kind of draws fluid um, from the body into the poo to make it um, softer and, and easier to pass for them. Um, and the, the rule with Movacol as well is um, for as long as your child has been constipated. So let's say if your child's been constipated for six months and then you start Movacol. So you start your Movacol, the doctor will, will help you with the dosage um, instructions and things like that. And you will continue with that. And then once your child reaches a point where they are having normal, soft formed stools mm -hmm. um, regularly, from that point, you want to continue on that dose of Movacol for six months. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> the length, the, the length of they could have only been constipated for three weeks. Then you go three weeks. So yeah. can I? It, it depends. But your doctor should be able to keep you right. Yes. Um, yeah, they should. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, but ask as well. Please ask. Um, ask the doctor. Like, okay, so when do I do this? And when do I do? You know, if with the with the move call or lactulose or whatever, make sure that you've got all that information. And if you don't, then phone and ask. Or phone um, phone the health visitors and you know someone yeah. someone within within the health visiting team yeah. can help. Or you. you've got your Eric website um, yeah. as well, and there is a yeah yeah. So Shannon says, what's that website again? So it's Eric E R I C. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you just type in Eric and toilet trainer or something like that, it'll come up. It's a fantastic, fantastic website. What um, I might do is we might put the link for the website in the page if we can do that if we can get yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah but well yeah we can try and try and do that um tracy my wee boy holds his nose until 
tells you he's stinky and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say this is a sign of being ready for potty training? So he's, yeah, so he's definitely, that awareness is yeah. there, absolutely. Um, so I don't know if you were at the beginning of the video, Tracy, or if you've maybe just joined later on, but um, it'll be available to watch at the beginning of the video. We spoke about lots, there's a massive list of different signs that we can look out for. Um, and what we say about these signs is that you're looking um, for a few um, a few of these, not all of them. <laughs> You'll be waiting forever if you're waiting for it, all of those signs, um, but waiting for a few of those. And one of those is definitely being aware yeah. when um, when they've filled their nappy, whether that's pee or poo. So, and, yeah. And that could be any, a lot of babies don't like having poos and stuff like yeah, that. So, yeah. I think poos are easier to detect yes. yeah. from and let the children, children don't like poos in their nappy compared to pees the same. So, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Absolutely. So that's all the questions I can see. I know there was a couple earlier that I managed to cross off by accident. Sorry, guys. Like I came off with the thing on Kendra's phone because it's not my <laughs> phone. I don't know how to use it. Um, so if there's any more questions, please do give us a shout. Um, obviously, you can. Um, you guys are from all over. I'd seen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was Glasgow. There was um, Kent. Ochnagat, there was Kent. There was Northern Ireland, um, yeah. which is amazing. We're delighted that, that we're reaching so many of you. Um, so you can speak to your local health visitor. Um, so please do give them a shout. Um, if you are in our area, you can obviously phone um, phone the Bump Health Visitors yeah. um, or you can give us um, a wee message. We, we can't always pick up the messages on Facebook and generally would you say to phone um, with that. But like today, this afternoon, you can message the Facebook page. Kendra and I will be available mm -hmm. um, on the Facebook page this afternoon um, if you want. So that's the 7th of October if anyone's watching this back. <laughs> don't, don't message any other day but 7th of October you can message um, yeah you can give us give us a shout so there's not any more um, yeah. questions coming through so I think we are done yeah. we are um, having our next live yeah. next one if you've had enough of us already <laughs> we are going to be doing CPR and BLS so yeah. your basic life support so um, we're going to kind of tag team doing some <laughs> resus on our Annie Dog and some choking as well yeah. so babies and children um i, I think it's the oh, the week after week, week after the holidays three weeks maybe? yeah three weeks, three weeks three or four weeks we'll have it on our page we'll get it out yeah <laughs> <laughs> keep an eye on the page we'll we'll get another event set up um yep yeah, so that's for babies and for children mm -hmm. resuscitation and choking um so that's really really useful so th these things guys these are all things that we do in our normal um day-to-day -day job okay but obviously at the moment we're not able to do this which is why we've turned to facebook and we're doing mm -hmm. these lives and things um but also normally we're only reaching our local bampshire um families yeah. so it's we're absolutely delighted that we're able to help um or hopefully we're helping yeah. <laughs> um, helping you guys um, now we've already done we did we have also done our weaning talk mm. we've done our home safety kind of first aid one yeah. now we've done um this one we've got our cpr one if there's any other kind of information you think that we could maybe if you're really struggling with whatever um give us a shout i think we're going to be doing another in a couple of months time we're maybe going to look at doing another weaning one for um, new mums again and so there's maybe more questions that you've got so yeah just yeah. keep an eye on the, the facebook page we've always got kind of other ideas or new yeah videos or whatever we're so, going to be doing just on that as well um we will have a questionnaire so if anyone would like to help oh, us yeah. fill out a questionnaire um and this questionnaire guys it just helps us make sure that the information we're bringing you is relevant to you it's the information you want using the facebook live is this the best way for us to do it and um, all these kind of things it's just really great for us to get feedback so that we know we're doing what you know what we're doing is making a difference and it's, and it's useful to you guys so if you wouldn't mind filling out a questionnaire please message the Bumpshire Health Visitors Facebook page with your email address and I will email you it's lindsay.mickey um, at nhs.scot so that um, you'll know when that email comes through <laughs> what it's for um, that's uh, that that'll be just a very two minute very quick two minute questionnaire um, about this and it just helps us make sure that that what we're doing is what you guys want and what you need and also on that questionnaire there's a wee bit um, for you to say anything else that you would like us to go over as well so yeah please yeah. do Please do that. So I think that's us.
we've been, 59 minutes we've been on for. No. <laughs> we, we could talk we could out for another <laughs> till we get to an hour. We could talk about poo and we were well, so long. Oh, absolutely. And, <laughs> and there's yeah. much more, probably. Oh, there's absolutely. more. So much so, more. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you guys are in for a treat. This is going to be your discussions now with your other halves and your family members and your friends. <gasps> Let's little talk Freddy, about poo, little baby. Freddy did a poo in the body <laughs> today. I'm so excited. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, um, please um, let us know, and yeah. we'll try as our very best to um, help you. Okay, yeah, that's us. Right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.